Hey, this is Justin in post-production. Again, we recorded this episode a while ago, and since then we've entered what historians call the cool zone. And that means there's probably some more important things for y'all to do with your money than give it to us to get bonus episodes. So, for the duration of the protests for George Floyd and against police brutality, you can donate to any of the charities listed below, which are mostly bail funds. Uh, and send us the receipt via Twitter DM or email, and we'll send you the link to the bonus episodes instead of y'all having to donate to our Patreon. Though, if you want to, you can still donate to our Patreon. Uh, so far, y'all have raised over $7,000 for bail funds across the country, which I guess means that podcasting really is praxis. Um, also, I split this episode in half, uh, not because I thought you all needed less content, uh, which apparently everyone likes listening to long episodes, but because I'm sick of editing three hours worth of podcast to get one week of content. Uh, so, you know, it's entirely for selfish reasons. Uh, I need my beauty sleep. Uh, anyway, on to the episode. Well, let's, let's listen to the Soviet National Anthem some more. <laughs> this is the only anthem I don't kneel to, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we, used, uh, we used the Easter's Red to replace the, uh, the news drop at one point, uh, so that, that's also a banger, right? Like, the communists truly do have the music. They know how to do a good one, yeah. It always, it always bothered me. Uh, that the national anthem was the Star Spangled Banner because I always thought it should be America the Beautiful, and people just nope, nobody likes that. They're just like, nah, like we uh, we like the Star. It's like no, it kind of blows though. Like aside from French- God Save the Queen being like a boot licking song, it was it's also <laughs> terrible because it's just like. <laughs> it convey. I mean, I have to say, it does a good job as a national anthem because it conveys exactly what living in Britain is like. Uh, it's dismal, but like, no, you could you could have had literally literally anything else, but uh, nope, st- sticking with that. America should just retroactively change theirs to like La Marseillaise or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That shit bops. Yes, yeah, the beautiful was written by like a lesbian socialist, so. Mm. We could do that, but no, no, gotta have the shitty one. Gotta yeah. have the shitty one. We always gotta, gotta pick the worst. Uh, it, the most American thing ever is they're like, yeah, we we fought an entire war of independence, and we're gonna make the national anthem written by a British dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm back. That's what's what's up? We're talking about national anthems. Oh, uh, some they're nat- not good. <laughs> some nationalist bullshit, man. Like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Apart from the communist ones, which do slap. All uh, national I, anthems should just I, have to be switched I, to I like some you, of some Rise, forty-one song. I have seen you put on the Marseillaise uh, when we're drinking more than once. Slaps. You, you yeah, fucking. Taste. You fucking <laughs> also, uh, like this. This made the rounds on Russian uh, or Russian-speaking Twitter. Uh, like I think the beginning of last year, there was this video of Putin did a state visit to Saudi Arabia, and the Saudi army band played the Russian national anthem. And I hope if if Justin, if I send you the link, I hope you can find a way to put it in the description or cut it in here because <laughs> it's truly egregious what they did to that piece of music. <laughs> it's, it it oh, sounds it sounds uh, like a carbon monoxide leak in the Star Wars cantina. Um, <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> Just huff a whole bunch of gas and try to play it. Yeah. <laughs> so, when the Soviets built this tunnel, right? Mm-hmm. There yeah. were a couple design deficiencies, right? I um, love design deficiencies. Oh, I can see one ways immediately. To design stuff. Is that just a guy in there, just walking? Yeah, it's just yeah some, that some happens. Guy. Yeah, it's just some guy. Because yeah. it's not like there's there's no like uh, sidewalk on the outside. There's no walkway, so this thing gets crowded with uh, uh, vehicle traffic and foot traffic and livestock all at once. Oh, oh great! Oh. I have to like shove all of my goats up against the wall so they don't get like squished. 
Yeah, there's no lanes. You, that like that's the same paint job I remember seeing, and I'm sure it's been there since it was built. There's no differentiator between the lanes, and it will be used as such at all times. So this is, I mean, there's no lanes, but it's two lanes wide, theoretically, mm. right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's got some lighting. I don't think this is original for reasons we'll get into. Um, it has. Yeah, some... it doesn't weigh 800 tons. I watched a video of someone driving through the pass. It does seem to have some amount of ventilation. Yeah. You can see two big fans back here. Not a particularly inspiring amount, though. <laughs> yeah, it's, just exactly. got, it's got like a desk fan hooked up to a really <laughs> long extension cord <laughs> that you can just see trailing away to somebody's like office building. <laughs> a generator that's also powered by a goat. <laughs> <laughs> we, have to, we, have to, we have to really redline the goat if there's a fire, yeah. <laughs> um so speaking of oh yeah enjoy that in both audio feed mm -hmm. that's that's the uh the goat fire department <laughs> <laughs> the goat caught fire it's not it's not a fire department comprised of or using goats it's like an airport fire department it's a fire department whose only responsibility is a goats <laughs> <laughs> Gotta put out those goat fires. <laughs> Nine one one. What's your emergency? <laughs> <laughs> That's screaming really goat from the. I knew you were in trouble by Taylor Swift. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh. All right. So they have this one twenty watt light bulb yeah. and a desk fan. Yeah, and this 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 road surface here was designed for Soviet trucks of nineteen sixty four. Right. Yeah, so like cool that. trucks. Cool trucks. Just an enormous, an enormous Mars or like a uh, Euro or something. And yeah, it's great. Now, as society has progressed further into the future, trucks have gotten heavier, generally mm. speaking. And oh, nice. the rule of thumb is road wear, you know, like pavement rutting, like damage to the road, is proportional to the fourth power of the weight of each tire on the road, right? Hmm. So if you have an 80,000 pound tractor trailer with 18 wheels Yeah. Uh, Aside from looking cool as hell. That does the same amount of damage to the road as 6,240 one ton cars. Oh, Jesus Christ. What's, That's what's that in good. goats? <laughs> A goat would do almost nothing. <laughs> the goat, in goat terms, it would be just an astronomically large number, an unfriendable <laughs> number of goats. I, I assume, assume the Salang Tunnel is filled entirely with goats. If the only thing filled, that's happening from this show is I'm becoming more and more pro goat based public transport. Th th that's exactly that's what will happen when you come on the show, man. We'll, <laughs> we'll find the dumbest possible thing of the thing that Justin did hours of research on, <laughs> laser focus on it, and then we'll just do that for an hour. Oh, yes, the Justin Rosniak uh, talking fast and or the annoyed sigh. I, I know the face you're making right now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you had only brought goats through this tunnel, this road service would be pristine. Um, this well, the, the lighting would be adequate. There would be oh well, there'd be a lot of goat shit on the ground, I guess. But maybe you know someone would come through and clean it. You have a pooper scoop or come through at once a See, day. See, the goats are job creators yeah. now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, there'd be like murals of like flowers and happiness on the walls. You know, it'd be so much better. But no, we put trucks through it, so the road service mm. started to degrade pretty quickly because. Yeah. Once this tunnel is built, it's much easier to ship goods into Kabul. So Kabul can, you know, like, your average Kabulite, I don't know what the name of a Kabuli? Kabuli, right? That feels rude. They, they, they can buy- well, it's, it's still not as rude as calling, uh, like, uh, calling the people Afghanis when that's <laughs> like, that's like calling an American a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> so you can- uh, Kabuli apparently is correct, and Kabulite. Yeah, like, yeah. According yeah. to- yeah. Okay, okay! Sorry. <laughs> I'm just, look, d look, d demonyms in, uh, like, broadly speaking, the Arab world is uh, very simple. You just stick an eye on there. Apart from Afghani. Right. right. So they uh, can. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Afghanistan, well known for being Arab. Sure. Why the hell not? Listen. <laughs> uh, don't tell that to, like, 99% of the people who go there. 
love to speak uh, Arab, also known as Pashto. I said broadly. <sighs> yeah, and when I said, said broadly, yeah. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Look, if it's ever had an Arab person in it, it's the Arab world, and the yeah. Taliban count, so... Excuse me, Al-Qaeda <laughs> count, so... If... Uh, no, uh, blazing trails. for the podcast where you... I, a white man, tell the Muslim woman about her own religion. <laughs> the also <laughs> white Muslim... The also white... There's like four yeah, white people <laughs> arguing about what counts as Arab or not. Just... <laughs> just look, <laughs> in the comments on this one, you're entirely within your rights to tell all of us to get fucked on this yeah. one. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> you have we'll famous uh, group of people known to know Arab people. Uh, Armenians. Uh... <laughs> oh, hey, you know, Croats are right next door, aren't they? You can go hang out with the Croats. <laughs> the Croatians are nice people. I always liked hanging out with the oh, Croatians. Yeah. yeah, okay. At least, at least <laughs> in college, I, I don't know. <laughs> they were always like Jesus. the heavy drinkers. It was fun. Um, I mean, uh, don't, don't once again, like, no, one, no yeah. one doesn't like Croats. That, that's yeah. fair. All right, that's just so, the binding I, feature I, 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 over I'm, the Soviet Union is that we're all heavy drinkers. Yes, I, 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 that's, I'm going to make that case for like the former Soviet Central Asian countries are uh, oh, by yeah. far oh, the yeah, heaviest yeah. drinking mm -hmm. Muslims. Yeah. Like, yeah. put me in the fucking yeah. shade. Yeah. No, I, uh, it's I, brutal. Uh, have a friend, uh, not a, <laughs> uh, not a Muslim. Her parents emigrated from Uzbekistan. And she'll, you know, send Snapchats and stuff of, like, weddings she's at. And, like, this is not a particularly tall or, like, big person. And I just have seen her suck down more alcohol. And <laughs> I, I, a big man, am just like, what the fuck? What's happening? Can someone there's, come pick me up? Ross, come the, the, get me, I'm scared. <laughs> there's, a, there's a book, there's a book called A History of Islam in Central Asia. Uh, after communism that I read, and the guy opens it with an anecdote where he's in like a like a university cafeteria in I think it's Tashkent he was in like right about the fall of the Soviet Union like ninety ninety one ish, and uh, he's like he's a foreign scholar he's visiting, and these guys like beckon him over and they say hey are you a Muslim he says yeah, and they say. Whoa, that's amazing. You're the first foreign Muslim we've ever met. Let's have a drink to celebrate. And they do. <laughs> yeah, that reminds me vividly of like whenever I visit my extended family, because I still have like uh, various members of the family that live in Armenia. And, you know, I, I'm not going to say I'm a light drinker. I mean, I, I am who I am, but like going to Armenia, I'm like, I am a fucking teetotaling sober person. <laughs> <laughs> they drink like aggressively to the point that they will leave you in the dust or dead. Like every mm. time my cousin's like, you want to go to the bar? I'm like, ah, fuck. Uh, <laughs> all, right. all right. Well, let, let's pretend that I didn't just call Afghanistan an Arab country. And, <laughs> <laughs> and let's move on Back to why to a bunch of trucks subject. have yeah. to squeeze their way through this fucking because tunnel. Because it was suddenly so much easier to get tchotchkes into Kabul people bought more tchotchkes. Yeah, it's a feedback which loop. meant they you... needed to move more tchotchkes into Kabul, right? Yeah, you be you can be like, yeah, this is great, I can get like Adidas sweatpants now, so I'm gonna buy 20,000 of them. Yes. Except those were being airlifted in by the Americans, I assume. Oh uh, yeah, fuck. This is, I did this this I did is say, yeah. all Matryoshka dolls coming through the tunnel. You, got, uh -huh. you gotta keep those Mosca Adidas uh, knockoff shoes that I love so much. <laughs> <laughs> I looked for those, actually. Yeah, I, when, uh, when yeah. I did my series, I wanted to find a pair so badly, and I knew the only place I could possibly find them was like old, weird, uh, like military surplus stores. And I found a pair that are like four hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, it's the same thing with like you remember when the um the Afghan like war rugs got big when people like started taking note of those. Those yeah. went from like a, you know a guy brings it home and then he's like yeah I don't like this thing anymore it stinks fifty dollars to uh five thousand dollars for like <laughs> uh like this Pakistani imitation rug. Man, I fucked up. I, I picked yeah. the wrong racket to get out of uh, going yeah, to Afghanistan. Right? Should I not have got into podcasting. Should have gone into rugs. Yeah, rug casting. That's where it's at. <laughs> Everyone likes a good rug. I mean, you know, that's just a that is fact true. of life. But anyway, so, goods from the Soviet Union. They can now go through from where they were transloaded off the barge and now go by truck the whole way. No goats involved. Right? Mm. Right. And it's because it's easy, it's easy and cheap to ship stuff, people start shipping a lot more stuff, right? 
Okay, so now things go well for a while, and then something called the Soviet-Afghan War happens, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I may so, have so, done they, entirely too many hours of podcasting about that particular <laughs> conflict. Look, the, there was there was a Spetsnaz involved shooting of the president of Afghanistan, a, and then some stuff a, happened. It was a glorious <laughs> war of anti-imperialism. <laughs> I love my uh, my worker based regime change. <laughs> yeah, no, this is great. Yeah, the absolutely no reason why uh, when the Taliban take Afghan uh, take um, take Kabul, they like fully Mussolini the guy who was like the last communist leader. Uh, oh, that was our boy Najibola. <laughs> absolutely, that was absolutely like that was purely just Taliban shit. There was no underlying reason for that. There's no like uh, war crimes that happened. Don't don't even worry about it. Don't think about it too much. Yeah, it was uh, the main reason was because he was a, a communist, and obviously the the Taliban are the freedom fighters uh, trying oh, to bring, true. you know, uh, democracy <laughs> to the people's <laughs> yeah, republic. Yeah, one for the Gipper. Yeah. <laughs> Taliban are well known for their love of uh, the dictatorship of the proletariat. <laughs> I mean, I guess my point is right. Like the um, yeah, obvi obviously, like the communism was kind of a no no. But I feel like a lot of the reason why they were able to do the Mussolini thing was because he was fully torturing people. Uh, uh no, I don't think that was it. Uh, I think like they they were clearly trying to dispense people's justice. That's why they blew up the Bamian Buddhas. They weren't working. They're <laughs> get a job. <laughs> yeah, they're class traitors. <laughs> I promise I'm not pro Taliban. All I'm saying is Bo Bergdahl was freely elected by the Taliban. <laughs> 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 Look, it, it's called incrementalism. Uh <laughs> It's it's the uh, the the podcast to Taliban supporter pipeline I've heard so much about. <laughs> yeah, sorry everybody. Hope you enjoy Afghanistan. Send us some souvenirs. I'll only bring green pens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you want to know more about the uh, Soviet Afghan War, I recommend you listen to Lions Led by Donkeys. It's a good podcast. I've heard. Yeah, do that. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the hosts are fucking hacked though. <laughs> All we right. need to start this by burping into a microphone. Uh, no, I don't. I don't know what we're doing. We're slipping. All right. So the Soviets decided to do a war and get themselves stuck in the same quagmire that every empire gets themselves stuck in, which is Afghanistan. Um, which means, of course, now they have a war going on. They need to address their supply lines, right? Now, yep. now we Forcius were... Guards Army need or Rus Army needs a lot of shit. Yeah, they need it's to... like the, the the weird tin of like weird reconstituted tin. beef that they feed tin. you in Russia. Yeah. Uh, tastes tastes spicy, which is not what you're expecting going in. <laughs> like, and they, it has the consistency of like cottage cheese too. So you like pry open this tin, and you'll be like, hmm, yeah, it doesn't look too bad, and it doesn't smell too bad even because it smells kind of like seasoned at least, which is what you want from like your your reconstituted meat. And then you take a bite of this, and it like it's like yogurt, but like spicy beef. And uh, just every oh. molecule of your body like rejects oh, it at once. Alice, why? Um, Alice, why? Th that's what that's what it's like. That's what it, that, that's you know what, what I, that's I, what I, that's I, what Joe Rogan made Soviet someone troops. eat that. On, fuck it. So, Joe Rogan made someone eat that shit on Fear Factor. That sounds like a nightmare. That's a nightmare <laughs> in a tin. I like. You know, what am yeah, I having yeah, tonight? I'd open that. And I'm like, I'm having sleep. MREs. Be grateful for your MREs. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we did say. a. We did an episode where we ate a whole bunch of like foreign um, uh, oh, meal rations, and yeah. uh, the Russian one was by far the worst. Oh um, yeah, they had something similar to what you described. It had the same consistency, but it kind of tasted like dog food smelled. Yeah, well, that, that, like it's it's all Tushanka, right? It's all like uh, like canned reconstituted meat, uh, and like it will vary a lot. The one that I had was a Russian state railways one. Which, <laughs> <laughs> which, um, yeah, I, I, I don't Welcome recommend. To the meat I, I train. think 
Yeah, I, I think the troops <laughs> got got it worse there, as always. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. I don't want reconstituted train meat. It sounds fucking horrible. Yeah, that's that's what happens when you scrap a train is you gotta like weld it open to get to the train meats inside. <laughs> oh god. That's that's what happens in Thomas the Tank Engine, yeah, when they, uh, <laughs> they, just, they just scrap the train and then they, they, they get it. They, they the Net Geo version of fucking Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> just like doing fully Red Dead Redemption, like field dressing a train and you're just like, yeah, that's good eating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I derailed this myself. I hauled it back. <laughs> there was a Skyrim mod where somebody replaced all the dragons with trains. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that rules. It's just like that. The trains breathe fire and you have to slay them to save the town people from you know, public transportation. I like that. <laughs> that, that is how Robert meat. Moses' nightmares looked for decades. I 1,000 <laughs> chest freezers full of train meat from one... <laughs> <laughs> One like Slay dash nine. <laughs> you know, like a weird uncle who keeps trying to like foist train meat on you. He's just like, uh, yeah, take take some train yeah, meat. Yeah, because you get so meat, much from yeah. one kill. Yeah. <laughs> so, sad, somewhere there's a there's a whole meat. culture with like a national dish that's fermented train meat covered in piss. <laughs> <laughs> Very Nordic. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, this is um, uh, this is a um. Uh, what's a fancy way of preparing meat? Um, oh fuck, I don't know. Like, they have yeah. to massage the train so you get marbled fat layers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah, exactly. a like train beef meat. train <laughs> Ser served in a bed of its own coal. <laughs> the, the, the real so uh, depressing part is like train veal. You know, they get them straight from the factories. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're gonna kill a little switcher engine. That you never, <laughs> never let out of the shed. <laughs> if, if they're gonna fatten up the liver, how? What exactly do they force feed the the trains? Oh, uh, it's probably just grain. You just get the like foie gras hose full of grain that you like force feed a goose, and you just do train gavage. You just like stuff it into the firebox. It's ch it's fucking chopped up pieces of car. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Who the the Soviet Afghan War? Joe, can you press see this a bit? Who won the Soviet <laughs> Afghan War? You know, Alice. I'm glad you asked because there's a lot of people who won that war that are winning this one too, and it's not the United States. <laughs> yeah, just a big W column. And yeah, a they're very, actually very small L. You know, it's it's really brave. I didn't think they'd do the repeat. Um, you know, I, I did, didn't think they had the intangibles this decade, but yeah, you know, I, I think in the They've, final. Well Clearly, the thing we've got to do is get Pittsburgh to invade Afghanistan because the Pitt super weapon's going to get them. Yeah, I, I would not wish uh, oh, yeah, Ben no, Roethlisberger no, no, no. being released at any population of <laughs> unspecified <people. laughs> The Soviet, Soviet Afghan war, but worse and more expensive. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It, 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 just like everything that America does, it has to be bigger, more complex, more expensive, and even dumber. So, Hell yeah. pay attention to this photo here. We're about to talk about this. Okay. Hmm. So when you're doing... When you're doing a war, suddenly these supply chains, which were fine beforehand, they now had to dress another bottleneck, which was crossing the Amu Darya River, right? Mm hmm This is in 1979, right? Because now we got a ship. I, I, I remember, I remember seeing that photo that you that you have circled before, and I seem to remember that's them coming in the opposite direction. Uh, mm. Look, yes, bridges work <laughs> both ways. That is true. Um, I, I'm simply yeah. trying to illustrate, right, the way the way that this worked out was not as intended. You you yes. should be driving the BTRs south, not north. So the propaganda photo opportunity cannot be ignored. Like I'm going to build my own retreat route. <laughs> so, <laughs> fucking blazing trails in military history. So as they're ramping up this dumb war they decided to do, they decide we need to get rid of this barge bottleneck that we mentioned before. So mm -hmm. they pick a specific part of the Amu Darya River, right, which is notable for the shifting banks. This is one of the only locations where it doesn't shift very frequently. Um, so they, what they do is they build the Afghanistan-Uzbekistan Friendship Bridge. 
Yeah, it's love... a friendship bridge. Nothing good is about to happen. Yeah, <laughs> this is like what, the, the way that Canada. I talked about. Look at your way, the way Canada. that I talked about the Soviets <laughs> thinking about railway gauge is how they think about bridges in reverse. Like, <laughs> if, if you try to build standard gauge railroad in Russia, they think of it as a friendship railroad. <laughs> so, all right. So what they do is this is where previously the barges would land, right? Um, so in 1975, uh, 1979, they build a pontoon bridge, right, that just floats on the river, and they bring people across, and they're like, okay, we're going to set up a, some kind of security perimeter, you know, around here, right, you know, so they can unload stuff, and then they build this whole doohickey here, right, and they get the construction guys in, and they build the Friendship Bridge, which is, what do you call a bridge you build during wartime for a uh, country you're invading? Uh, Doubling yeah. down, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there was actually a fort that dated from the fourth century, right about here. Um, it's not there anymore. Uh, Whoops! Because they, just, need, the, they the shaking hands <laughs> meme, but it's both sides of the Soviet Afghan war and destroying historical uh, like sites. <laughs> yeah, so the they, cultural uh, revolution, but Afghanistan. Yeah, they demolished it to build a rail yard. Um, I understand there was some like emergency team of archaeologists that made it to the site right before oh, it cool was destroyed hell. by the Soviets. I, I the A team, but architects. The, the fucking the, the like. Uh, I want to see the Soviet Indiana Jones, <laughs> Comrade Jones. They're, yeah. they're, I, I, archaeology is one of those professions that's like usually boring, but like actually there are some heroic feats of archaeology which have er happened. Mm. <laughs> All right, so they finished the permanent bridge, 1982. This has two traffic lanes. It has one rail railroad. It has one oil pipeline. Uh, they pumped crude oil across the bridge, and then somewhere down here is actually a tiny, cute little oil refinery. Um, so they can, you know, rather than ship 50 different kinds of oil products across the bridge on tr tr trucks, they, you know, they just refine it on the Afghanistan mm. side, I, right? I, I, I'm doing the, like, uh, the thing that I was doing when I was 13, where I was like, man, the fucking Afghan war is all about oil, but like in reverse, and they're just like pumping oil into Afghanistan. Yes. Uh, and you can see the, uh, the trucks, the trains, they come over here, there's a rail yard here. You can see right here, this is munitions depots. Anytime you see like a bunch of warehouses at an angle, uh, mm. that's always munitions. <laughs> yep. Um, They're just setting the perfect trap to, to lure in the United States. <laughs> they're, they're, pu they're pumping in oil. They're put bringing in munitions, like yeah, they're, they're, and they're yep. building communism. Yeah. Like, yeah. what more do you want? It's like it's like a big fly trap. It, it's just a trap with a little hole that, like, Kissinger can shove his head through. <laughs> hey, guys! <laughs> we got oil, I mean, we got munitions, we got trains, which is something the United States hates. Um, so anyway, yeah, this links up with the wider Soviet rail network. You know, you can, you can get a train in from, like, anywhere from the Baltic Sea to, like... Sakhalin, yeah. Yeah, no, not Sakhalin. They still haven't finished that tunnel. Oh, okay, they fine. Start, they start, you, can, you can pick up you can pick up a nuclear submarine with a crane at Murmansk, put it on a flatbed, a really long flatbed, ship it all the way down here and dump it in the river. Yeah, exactly. You know, it could be like... Somewhere right. General Dynamics is taking notes. <laughs> How can we just, do this? We're refining the Afghan Navy proposal here. Yeah, you could get anything from Russia here in, like, a week. Like no problem. Like, oh, I need like eighty flat cars yeah, full of tanks. Sure. Do you need like Amazon? Um, who? Oops. <laughs> Uber Eats, but for Soviet <laughs> tanks. Yeah. <laughs> so we need. Uh, we need. We need to get all the C students from uh, uh, Kazan Technical University. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're gonna bring. We're, also, we need the same number of zinc coffins, just in case. Uh, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't worry about this. Yeah, I mean, we, we can ship them in the same car. It's probably fine. None of them will notice us. We bought these from FEMA. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, this is uh, to give a comparison to how the Soviets supplied the Soviet Afghan War. I mean, here in the United States, what well, we flew over all the equipment to go do Afghanistan garbage, right? Sometimes using Soviet planes, like the Antonov 225 for the really heavy shit. 
yeah, a lot of the contractors come from like uh, Belarus and uh, Romania and stuff. And they they also go overland, which is ridiculously complex mm-hmm. and stupid. Uh, if you remember a while back, uh, they shut down the overland passes and like mm-hmm. uh, they're they're so used to like a continuous flood of of stuff coming in that like bases people are like panicking like we can't get any supplies <laughs> weird it's almost like use not the fucking mountain road that barely works hmm. well this is the equivalent of like if we decided if we're going to invade afghanistan we're going to build an interstate highway <laughs> From Washington, D.C. to the Afghanistan border. <laughs> Look, this is, this is one of the decisions about the, the, the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan that makes you remember that the entire like command structure of the Soviet army had come up during like Stalingrad to the Sea Love Heights. Like where they're just yeah no we'll just build we'll just build a big arrow pointing to Kabul and then we'll just drive down it. It's fine. <laughs> Somewhere, so it's like that doesn't sound like it's gonna make a lot of sense. We didn't stockpile that many goats. Like we're not sure how to do <laughs> J- just invade that country. All right, fuck it. We're building a friendship bridge. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's kind of like I I feel like this is the hangover from when you win a war. Is you like you know how you're always fighting the last war? You internalize the lessons of that so well that you're like, listen, son, I didn't need any goats to defeat the entire Waffen SS, <laughs> so I'm not gonna need any here. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because uh, like the Soviets uh, who pretty much came up with it completely almost independently of uh, Brezhnev were just like, yeah, it only take like three weeks. Yeah. Like, man, you have to be high. You have to be so high in your own shit gas to believe that kind of shit. Like, yeah, that should only take about three weeks. We got that'll buff out. Look, no one's ever successfully done any military intervention in Afghanistan, but we're we will be the first. Yeah, I mean, I I guess also the like the other thing about the assumptions of the Second World War on that decision making is that you can not only be like, yeah, it'll take three weeks, but like you can also be, yeah, it'll take like two million dead, maybe three, no more than that though. That's fine. There's nothing. Plus or minus a couple republics. <laughs> yeah. The long the long term plan for this uh, in 1983, especially, is when they were really uh, trying to, it, for reasons we'll get into in 1983, the long term plan was. They were gonna extend this railroad all the way into Kabul. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Holy over, shit! Over the Hindu Kush mountains Whoa. in the middle oh. of a war. <laughs> Can you imagine? In the middle of places that like nobody lives for hundreds of miles. They're like, yeah, we'll put a train through it. Yeah. Can you yeah. imagine like trying to survey this line, like in the middle of a war? <laughs> Let alone <laughs> trying to, to, try to build the thing. <laughs> They have to like draft an entire regiment of surveyors. Like, oh, I haven't heard from that one in about five weeks. So head now. <laughs> you have to like, uh, and then like trying to build it and then operate it. I mean, one of the things. I mean, I'm pretty pro train in general. Mm. Oh, yeah? Tra- trains can't get around IEDs very easily. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Oh, train. Feel than an <laughs> we built an MREP, but train. Uh, yeah. And that that's actually a, a fucking wonderful. Uh, like that this road that I had to drive on was in an MREP. And if you're not familiar with those, they look like if you uh, if you had ten or a hundred million dollars and but wanted to build like a Mad Max car uh, <laughs> with, with, with like no government oversight and like, well, I want to build like six of them with no interchangeable parts. You're like, yeah, yeah, cool, do that too. Yeah, uh, because they had a bunch yeah. of competing designs and then they adopted all of them, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, that's that's I, the sign of efficiency. We had three different models in a four truck <laughs> convoy. <laughs> <laughs> and they, and they, all look, they all look like a shipping container, like fucked a Tetris block. They're all like deeply fucked vehicle designs. They got like the weird and, window shape, they're all angular, right? And they like stick yeah, out the side. It, yeah. And they do they're like really good at like absorbing blasts or whatever, but uh you know they're they're not legal to drive on US roads because how big they are. Now drive them in Afghanistan through this mountain pass. Cool. See you on the other side. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just just like yeah, we're just like just taking off the wing mirrors preemptively. Just like, yep, yeah, not gonna need these. And yeah. the windshields are so small, it would be like, have you ever seen those uh, sunglasses that people make for solar eclipses? Oh, yeah. <laughs> then put those on and, and drive your car. <laughs> that, but it's, they're like a foot thick. Yeah, and if you don't see something, it will 
also explode. So you, know, <laughs> you have to you have to worry about like falling to your death. Uh, like, you know, you can't see the bottom off the side of, uh, other than the fact that your window sucks. And you can't see it anyway. But like you, it's so far down that you can't see it. And there's no kind of guard or anything on the on the mm. shoulder. But thinking, just thinking, thinking about this statistically, there's a bunch of like sixty-year-old uh, Russian guys who would like have exactly the same experience, but with a BTR or a BMP. And yeah, just my like, uncle. <laughs> 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 I had, I had, uh, yeah, you know, the the Soviet mo- the Soviet Red Army or uh, no- mostly deployed people from outlying republics to fight in the war. Uh, so huh. like. Uh, most of my family, uh, other than my grandpa, who did something terrible and joined the French Foreign Legion, all fought in Afghanistan. So, yeah, we get to that full circle going on. Are you, sure, are you sure that you you haven't been like cursed in some like sort of a like a a family <laughs> way? Like, yeah, just so, like every generation of your family has to like for some extremely specific curse reason has to drive a like shitty armored vehicle <laughs> down this one highway. <laughs> I did definitely my grandpa pissed off so like it, it, he slept for a night or like bivouacked on an ancient Native American <laughs> bear <bear-bear laughs> <around Yeah. Afghanistan. laughs> so, got cursed for my, my I don't have any kids but if I do they yeah, better never, start driving never, yeah never yeah. learn to drive an armored vehicle very early dad why are you making me learn how to drive this AMRAP shut up you'll, it's for your own good you'll see you son <laughs> So they built this whole rail yard and warehouses and oil refining complex and munitions depot, so on and so forth. This is still in use today, by the way. Um, And this greatly simplified the supply chain into unload train, load onto truck, right? This got rid of the barge bottleneck, but now the bottleneck was the Salang Pass and the Mm. tunnel, right? Barge guys should have got a union. Now they're they're trying... (laughs) Now they're trying to uh, <laughs> unload all these train loads of material and people and the whole oil pipeline worth of oil products, and now we got to transport it throughout the country, but most of it through the Salang Pass, right? Mm-hmm. Now, because... Th- this seems problematic. Because it's a war, of course, it's difficult to do maintenance on the road reading, leading to the tunnel, let alone on the tunnel itself, because... Uh, it turns out the people who live in Afghanistan are good at shooting at you from the high ground. <laughs> uh, you know, I think war might just be a vibe. They'll get over it after another 40, 50, 60, 70 years. <laughs> well, then we'll have yeah. Meanwhile, so, somewhere, somewhere in Mazarikot, a guy like gets handed a rifle from his grandfather, mm-hmm. and it's just it just starts all over again. Great. Uh, while the Afghan National Army is using hand-me-down Gundams they got from the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we have we have gypsy danger from Pacific Rim. It, like every time it moves, it destroys two city blocks of couple, which it cannot move outside of. It just has a, a vote for Karzai banner flapping from its chest. <laughs> no, no, no it, it has the it has like a pack call on top. <laughs> <laughs> you just did like the G Gundam Afghanistan Gundam version. That's that's what you you just made that. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, you know, usually the guys who show up to repave the road, you know, they're pretty popular. It's like, ah, shit, I'm going to have a nice, smooth drive. Now they're getting shot at. It's <laughs> difficult to get some mm. guys, you know, to go out and repave the road. Um, yeah, when you can getting- kind of take that personally if you're just trying to repave a road and somebody starts shooting at you, too. Well, you imagine you you're, like- like, you're trying to flag traffic to repave the road. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, you Somebody got like, you got, like the, the- grenade at you, yeah. You got like the the sign that says stop and that says slow on the other side, and then <laughs> you have to flip another one that says gunfire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you get the triangular sign. Yeah, it's you, like just, a, you just like strap a plate to the back of the stop sign, so you're just like trying to stop bullets with it. I have to stand here stoically while they're shooting all around me, just so everyone knows what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> but the important part is, is they got everybody jobs being the bullet swatter guy. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, they, they became a, a pretty powerful union within the People's Democratic Republic of <laughs> Afghanistan. Yeah. I've, I've uh, got a new job. It's called Humansky Shieldsky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Here is my membership card to local Death Trap 69. 
Man, they didn't. Did they even make the 40th Army a guards formation after the Afghan War? Because if they didn't, that's fucked. They don't even give you a little badge. They, I think they did their best to kind of like spread it out. Like, oh, let's go ahead and hide all this shame for a while. Uh, uh. So the, you know, and it, apart from like the extremely heavy truck traffic, which is causing a lot of problems for this road, it's also, you know, it's, it's part of an area which gets very hot, but also very cold. So the freeze-thaw cycles are pretty bad for the asphalt, right? Potholes mm. develop pretty quickly. Um, so, you know, that slows vehicles down. That makes travel, you know, it makes, you know, you're driving over this road that used to be at best okay, and now it's full of potholes. Well, like and puddles look, and all kinds of crap. Two two yeah. things two things that we know produce extremely good drivers ah, crap. Uh, are both armies and Russia. Uh, we have a <laughs> bunch of dash cam videos to suggest both of these are the case. Yes. Um and we also know that like Soviet trucks and Soviet vehicles famously very light and agile. Um Perfect so I'm for these sure, roads. Yeah, I'm sure this would not be a problem. I mean, you know, the Soviet Union, if they had been smart, what they would have done is invested in this fantastic technology, right? Called <laughs> Big mud tires. <laughs> <laughs> they really would have cornered the market on mud. Thirty-five and... inch dittos, baby. Thirty-five inch dittos, baby. What, what you need? No, what you need is a is a like a Soviet Elon Musk to be like, we'll just no, build a, a like a hyperloop to Kabul. Baby. You'll be able to like get inch dittos. You'll be able to get. Uh, you'll be able to get on a train in Moscow. Uh, and then you, in forty-five minutes, you'll be in Kabul because you'll just go under. That's literally though what they were planning to do was build the railroad to Kabul. Like you know, which, fuck me. They, they were planning yeah, to do thought. that, but it didn't quite happen. Um, but one of the things that inspired that was, of course, an incident in late nineteen eighty-two, just after this depot had been built. That was this. This was built in May of nineteen eighty-two, uh, broadly or at least finished. Then November of 1982, there was a convoy that went through the Salang Tunnel. Um, and mm -hmm. come on, bad stuff happened. <laughs> I don't like that slide. Yeah, not a fan. No, um, I, the Soviet conscript looked just different in this picture. <laughs> He's just like, fuck a bit. Comrade, the truck is on fire again. Uh. <laughs> that I, sh I should point out that the your your like lowest level base level Soviet conscript was constantly drunk. Uh, yeah, just so constantly drunk, having Dedovshina done to him, <laughs> like he's just being beaten constantly. <laughs> now drive through this tunnel, like. Fuck this! I'm setting this tunnel on fire. <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't know for a fact that this didn't start through like an improperly wired stereo playing hard bass. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like oh, it's like got some alligator clips hooked up to it. <laughs> it, was a, it was a bad batch of like kvass all gone wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kvass. People don't know this, but a, but a kvass trailer can achieve a fuel air mixture. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's so little, there's so little information on this like fire at all. Like the the Soviet Union claimed it never happened. Um, hmm. Yeah. Okay. Or, good. End the podcast there. Yeah. <laughs> End, <laughs> episode whatever. A thing that never happened. There were two like. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 uh, I hope the episode that I'm on achieves the highest numbers of Soviet. National anthem plays. That, that's no. that's the legacy yeah, I want to leave behind. Absolutely. <laughs> so according to the, uh, my five year plan is to triple that. <laughs> according to the uh, records of the Soviet Army, on third of November, on the third of November, nineteen eighty two, two convoys crashed into each other in the Salang Tunnel, and that caused a traffic jam. Well, that's what oh. you get from not having lane markers. A guy yeah. just like falls asleep and is just like donk, and you just bash <laughs> two two giant Kraz trucks off of each other. And everything else, like uh, it, even if there's a traffic jam, that could plausibly kill a whole lot of people because there's no ventilation, right? Um, yeah. And then everything else we hear is like hearsay. And, and Joe, I heard that you have 
talk to people who are primary sources about this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so when like there's traffic jams that happen every day in this lang tunnel, I don't think I just made a clean pass through it a single time, night or day, no matter what the hour is. Because uh, I mean, they get tons of speed and then just like fly their truck through at sixty miles an hour. And Jesus, even <laughs> even uh, e- even ten years ago, uh, this the all the the, the CO two or whatever builds up, and uh, it just chokes the life out of you. It, like to the point that like people like just get out of their car and walk away from it, and then come back later. Hmm, the sleepy time tunnel, delightful. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Beautiful. Just, just like just putting up a sign next to um <laughs> next to the big portrait <laughs> just says, yeah, enter here for nap. <laughs> <laughs> Very long nap. Uh-huh. It's you know, that's most um problems with public transportation is like or like public I- infrastructure is one of the major drawbacks. And even driving down your interstate is choking to death. So mm. so he, it's a huge problem. Absolutely, and that's just like a, that's an inherent vice, right? You can't do anything about that, it just happens. Yeah, it's just like the tides, yeah. it's magic. Yeah. yeah, you can't do anything about it, you know, it's like, uh, well, well, we artificial induce that, honestly, because, you know, you have to hold your breath through the entire tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that, uh, that, like, old mother's tale of, like, uh, you have to hold your breath while driving down the road, or you'll get attacked by a ghost or whatever it was. Yeah. Or they'll leave like mm. handprints on your bumper, like that, except it's a mile long tunnel. <laughs> yeah, and the ghost is the Taliban. <laughs> yeah, the, the ghost is an entire regiment of Soviet kids. soldiers. <laughs> you just start hearing ghostly hard bass. <laughs> like it, it works on the Pennsylvania Turnpike, but you don't have to slow down to five miles an hour to get through a mile long tunnel. I never fucking do, so. <laughs> The other thing about this tunnel is there's no alternate route for hazmats. Um, hmm. Which, of course, what we do in Pennsylvania is no hazmats are allowed on the Pennsylvania Turnpike tunnels. So you have to direct all of the trucks full of, like, acid and gasoline and explosives and whatever the fuck. And they have to take a tiny winding road up and down the mountain as oh, opposed yes, to going do. through the tunnel. Suck it, nerds. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> cannot wait until you, until American Truck Simulator lane, makes like it out east. The, the truck simulator, but you're driving a vat of acid through Amish country. Yeah, absolutely, yes. can't wait. I hope they yeah. add the carts. I yeah. think it'd be funny. <laughs> it, like you have to like you, you can you can slosh the acid back and forth, and it spits out the top and like vaporizes the <laughs> Amish. You know, Ross, Ross <laughs> your hatred Amish for the Amish. Amish. Is, uh, yeah, is DLC. Yeah, it's it's genuinely one of the most baffling pieces <laughs> of deep lore that this show has. I don't like the Amish. They're like fucking. Like, they're like all. They all do puppy farming. Cults. Every single one they're of all them. All of the cult. <laughs> well, I mean, for Rumspringa, you get your cart, and then you wild out, and then you come back and you start a puppy farm. Everybody, like that's that's the <laughs> stuff. Well, you don't, you could never see your puppy farm neighbors again. <laughs> From what we, what is known is that there was a fire in the Selang Tunnel sometime in November of 1982 uh, for, with a military convoy, and anywhere between it didn't happen and 3,000 people were killed <laughs> in this fire. Oh, that's... Ah, oh, Soviet numbers. I missed them so since since the the, the Estonia sinking. It's uh. their their numbers on the war are so bad. Like they, I think they admit maybe like fifteen thousand soldiers died there, which is <laughs> obscenely low. Yeah, just like twelve guys. I mean, yeah, we yeah, lost Bill and, and Chuck. It's horrible. <laughs> yeah, in unrelated reasons, in Kavarovsk cry, uh, we had like about a two million death rate from like unrelated training accidents. We don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> just, a, just a bunch of horrible closed casket training accidents. What well, kind of training accidents? Uh, well, we were training with these guys called the Mujahideen, and things kind of went <laughs> sideways. We uh, yeah, my favorite uh, part was like in the Red Army at the time, one of your punishments would be transferred to Afghanistan. So, like, <laughs> and, and it could happen. Like, you know, they're they were drafted for about two years, sometimes lower uh, when the war went on longer. And if you went there, you could spend your entire conscription in the country. Mm. 
You like Yeah, you get you get out of your conscription term and you're like, finally, I don't have to get beaten with sticks by everybody who's been in longer than me. Now I can beat people with sticks and you just go home. Yep. <laughs> Well, it's a uh, healthy system. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out really well. All all the deaths were were, were from friendly fire because Uzbekistan and Afghanistan were friends because of the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! All right. So yeah, the the inevitable happened. Like a uh, convoy caught fire in the tunnel and murdered thousands of people, probably, but we don't technically mm. know. Um, but that probably did happen. Uh. Most likely. So, anyway, what what was the aftermath of this? Well, obviously, number one, the Soviets decided it's time to try and build a railroad to Kabul, which didn't mm. happen. Um, but now, is this going to be for the same reasons as it's very difficult to like d do anything when people are shooting at you? Yes, I mean, I feel like that's the right. I feel like that's the right ballpark. In terms of like mm. things I think would be very difficult to do while I was being shot at, surveying mm. a railroad a long list. would be one of them. <laughs> mm. I feel like building a railroad from the border of Af the northern border of Afghanistan all the way to Kabul would be one of like the nine engineering wonders of the world. I yeah. I have not <laughs> it could be done. Um, you, hey, listen, you need... The Soviet Union used their capacity to do an industrial wonder of the world on Chernobyl, which <laughs> kind of like cancels itself out. Yes. So... yes. Yeah, you get a negative, but also a positive. It just evens out in the middle. Like you didn't end yeah. everything. Good job. Yeah, you you did you did probably like a, a a kind of a containment operation that nobody else in the world could have done, and then also all of the guys who could have built a railroad to Kabul die of radiation poisoning for yes. some reason. <laughs> yeah, it's an engineering wonder which corrected a problem which shouldn't have existed in the first place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, that's that's like why I'm hesitant to do an episode on Chernobyl. Is that like it's one disaster followed by a long, long program of anti-disasters and like containing it. Look, uh, nuclear power usually good, but like yeah. you're, spo you're supposed when, to do when the done hard correctly. You're supposed to do the hard work of containment before. <laughs> it melts down, yeah, it right? saves a lot of work if you start with this one weird trick of the, building a container. Yeah, you build the thing for your reactor. This is why I can still live in Pennsylvania because Three Mile That's Island true. they did that work beforehand. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I really like. I really like that kid in Michigan who built the reactor in his backyard. I mean, uh, that sure. guy ha had the you know the the gutsy of Soviet engineers. Like you know what? When it explodes, I'll figure it out. And he did. He called FEMA. <laughs> <laughs> he irradiated his entire neighborhood. True, uh, and he later died from cancer. But like, he called FEMA and got it handled. And you know what? He didn't have to pay anything because FEMA had to do it. So if anything, he, he is uh, disrupting. He's disrupting the uh, the system. Yeah, it's like call eight one one before you dig. Call FEMA after you irradiate your neighborhood. Yes. Yeah, and honestly, thankfully, it's Michigan, so nobody ever noticed. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the, the fire happened, the Soviet Afghan war, you know, yeah, obviously um the Afghans won. Um yeah, another big another big W. I feel like the real Afghan war is the friends we made along the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, th th then we like lead straight into the Afghan civil war, famously a fun time for all involved and which goes very well. I think during that, yeah, I hear that might still be happening. Weird, huh? Weird, yeah. Love how that worked. At that point, like the tunnel was, I don't. It was, it was in various states of disrepair since since the war. Um, I think it's in better shape now than it's ever been, but it's still really hmm. bad. Um, well, like that—that's a recurring theme, right? Is that you end up with like the uh, the ISAF occupation of Afghanistan? You just end up like guarding and repairing a bunch of like Soviet or pre-Soviet infrastructure, like dams and stuff. Yeah, I um, wish it was that good, like because mm. that means that like they would be building stuff that actually worked. Uh, one of the things that I had to help build was a school, and they mixed it uh, like the uh, the concrete dirt mixture. Like ninety nine percent dirt, one percent concrete, because uh, it's contractors. And so when it, <laughs> so when it rained, the school melted. 
Oh man, oh, that's oh, that good. God. Yeah, that costed like I don't know with contractor inflation and grift, uh, probably like a hundred million dollars. <laughs> well, to get some, your money's some guys worth just screaming, in Afghanistan, screaming about the water cement ratio as usual, and then like actually <laughs> no, it's terrible. The aggregate's awful. They they did not use the finest aggregate. They used the um the bad aggregate. Um, concrete jokes, everyone. Um, mm. so hold on a second. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alice. Yeah, anytime. Welcome, yeah. welcome to the concrete cast. Yes. <laughs> very, very niche. Very yeah. niche show. Hey. We, Have uh, you seen in, in, in Landlord Super, that new Steam game, you can mix concrete with, like, pissing in it? Oh, Good man. No, that, would pro you. that would probably be fine. Um, well, I mean, it seems to work. You can just <laughs> use it instead of water, you just uh, piss in it. Piss is mostly water. That wouldn't throw up the water-cement ratio too much. It'd probably be I mean, fine. if it collapses, it probably doesn't go up super fast, so, like, you just scrape out the dead tenants and then you rent it again. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I believe piss would be classified as uh, what they call an admixture, right? Which is um, anything you add to the concrete, which isn't water, uh, cement, or aggregate. So mm. um, you know you might you might technically you know fail mm. some quality inspections, but piss is basically water. So now uh, now mulling the concept of concrete. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is this is some true uh, redistribution here because you're gonna have to get everybody to get involved. Um, <laughs> Just a so, bunch of guys standing around a cement mixer. <laughs> <laughs> guys, I got a game called Ookie Tunnel. Uh, we're actually. <laughs> oh my god! All right, so yeah, we're a very serious podcast. <laughs> it's a family show. The tunnel today has got like got a five mile an hour speed limit. It's basically <laughs> unlit. It's <laughs> that's the kind of laugh that you want to hear yeah, about a speed un, limit. Un, yeah, un, yeah. <laughs> and it's oh, it's amazing. Also, I, I want to like crowdfund. Like you know how some people crowdfund to build schools in Afghanistan. I want to crowdfund to build. You know those like nagging signs they have where they like measure your speed and then they yeah. don't have a camera or anything, but they're like the speed limit is like five. You did sixty. I want to put one of those <laughs> up at the end. You know the Taliban's gonna end up being the good guy and show up and rip the copper wires out of there too. I was about <laughs> to say someone shoot that on day one. And I would support them. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I was really on the fence about uh, my allegiance to the Taliban um, until I heard about their righteous stealing of copper. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like really anti-copper wire. <laughs> hate, hate women's rights. Uh, hate, hate secular education. Hate copper wire. As simple as. I mean, as it was written, you know. Yeah, absolutely. It's it, it's in there. It's in there. <laughs> the the anti-copper hadith. Who can forget? <laughs> there. Are so there's some, uh, the traffic is still obviously very heavy on the Slang Pass because there's still massive amounts of just goods and supplies and whatnot that need yeah. to go a Bebus in, track into, pants. yeah, into Kabul, right, which now you can get Adidas track pants in Russia, so, you know, of course, they probably come in through the north. They, they, don't, they don't come from Russia, they're just sparkling track pants. <laughs> 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 uh, and then you, you, you know, all this shit has to go through this two-lane tunnel for a city that's larger than Los Angeles, right? Yep. You know, which is ridiculous. This traffic's very heavy. And one of the problems with the pass, you know, not just the tunnel, but the road through the pass in general, is it's very politically unpopular to close it to make repairs, because, like, how else yeah, is Yeah, we're just gonna have to, gonna like, strangle in? you a bit to, like, do the thing. Yeah, so, you know, what, one thing which various... IMF associated, you know, non government right. organization, blah, blah, blah. They've been looking at is like, okay, we should dig a second tunnel. So then we can close and, <laughs> and then fix the we first let the one. mongoose out to like fight the snakes. <laughs> yeah. So this is like, this is something which has been seriously looked at over the past 10 or 15 years is like, we should build a second tunnel so we can at least fix the road. Um, but of course, you know, there, uh, there's, there's still a bit of war happening in Afghanistan, as it turned out. What would you the F-35 version of a tunnel look like? It's oh, just it like... It could also be on fire, I suppose. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's meant to be that way. If it's constantly burning, it's easier to control. No, that's just the Elon Musk uh, car tunnel to Hickey. That, that's what the, the, the that tun- is. The tunnel... The tunnel is invisible to radar, but like also for no reason because it's multi-role, it also functions as a bridge and an airport. It's actually just a painting of a tunnel on a wall. <laughs> yeah, the, the DLC is a sign that just says boom. <laughs> yeah, and like the, the placement of the tunnel was even dumb back when the Soviets did it because like the people uh, in the valley are pretty independent, like always pretty much run themselves independent from Kabul. So whenever they're unhappy, they just close it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like that still happens. Uh, th- that whole area was controlled by Masood, uh, and, and for the most part, the Northern Alliance, who still kind of run themselves. Oversight. <laughs> Tunnel's closed. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we have some. Sorry, we let, have... Me, let me see your tunnel pass. Mm. We have some goats I mean... you could use. Yeah, it's a toll booth, but you pay it in goats. Yeah, (laughs) someone's got to go back and get a shitload of goats. (laughs) (laughs) But listen, if if we just fund more stuff in Kabul, if we just give the cops more European uniforms, and if we just give them more trucks, then eventually the thing that I see from my window will look like a state, so I don't have to worry about this. Yeah. My personal favorite thing about the Afghan police is that their uniforms look like hand-me-downs from the Cuban army. <laughs> like, <laughs> c- circa 1960? It's absolutely amazing. Oh, do they, do they still have, like, the green jumpsuits, then? That it's, rules. It's like the, this really coarse wool, and it's like a, a, a light, like, teal. But it, lo- it looks in their ha- with their hat is really what makes it. It's the same, like, model hat. And <laughs> so they've just got the Castro hats. Yeah, it's it's absolutely amazing. Um, oh, that rules. I don't know how they still get supplied things from the 60s. Uh, I believe the Selang Tunnel is also a time machine. Um, <laughs> that sounds right. It's a right, liminal yeah. space. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, we're now a vibes podcast. And so you, you enter into this tunnel and like the world changes around you. Hot tunnel it, time It's like machine. entering a cheat code in a video game. You have to get your jingle, like you have to turn your jingle truck to the left, the right, and then get up <laughs> to just the right speed. Then you back to the future with your jingle truck. Now, you, you know, it's not dead, though. The Chinese are now trying to build a railroad to Kabul. Good luck. Belt and road! <laughs> Just belt and road, motherfucker. We're yeah. going to belt and road. Uh, we are going to do some soft power and maybe also some hard power by building some friendship infrastructure. <laughs> uh, it's actually, it's not the belt and road in Afghanistan, it's like the Pakul and Toyota Corolla. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I still, I so badly want, because people do fan art and I'm ever grateful, I so badly <laughs> want Gypsy Danger wearing a Pakul. Uh, <laughs> That'd be outstanding. Yeah, absolutely. I so yeah, no, this is this is going to go perfectly. I'm sure that the third consecutive as well, no, fourth consecutive superpower to try to be like, yeah, we will just we will simply influence Afghanistan in the direction that we want is going to do perfectly. The only thing that's going to happen is in like 50 years when we still have uh US soldiers deployed there, they're going to be guarding things outside of like they have like picture of Mao on it instead of Mas- uh, Masood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just back again and like your grandkids are like driving uh like a Chinese copy of a BTR down this thing. <laughs> My grandpa told me this tunnel sucks. <laughs> he did a whole podcast about it. What's a podcast? It's what we had before we had direct mind impl- implementation of. Uh, well, before uh, the troika concepts. got together to become president for life, they were all podcasters. It was really strange. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Eternal President Christman. <laughs> the podcast, the president pipeline. <laughs> <laughs> you know, really, most of what people got sent to the Gulag for was podcasting. I mean, they probably deserved it. I mean, yeah, awesome. absolutely. The, the podcasts are the Kulix of this age. Oh. <laughs> Just hoarding all of the content. <laughs> How much does your Patreon make? Get on the train. Uh, not again, man. Not again, man. Oh, man. Okay, well, the, what did the, we learn? The fucked up thing about there is a lower and upper bound about how much your podcast can make. You know, you know, it's like, <laughs> if, you, if you're in the middle, that's when you get 
sent to the um, the re-education camp. The, con- yeah. the content camp. Yep. <laughs> It, I hear uh. you. It's actually a uh, a skills camp. Um, you learn a lot of nice <laughs> things. Um, right. you know. They give you the a- videos that people that work for the camp say they're very nice. They, mm. they give you a wallet when you get in. <laughs> <laughs> so what have we learned aside from do not try to invade Afghanistan? That was a big one. Yeah, T- um, tunnels are for trains, not cars. For, uh, for cars. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I, I've learned to be uh, wary of all tunnels now. I have a tunnel-based phobia, and I'm sure this won't be crippling in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> <laughs> have, have we tried having special forces assassinate Hamid Karzai and replace him with a train? <laughs> Abdallah, Abdallah is just a two-track train now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there, well, there's like, uh, there, there are now more trains in Afghanistan than there ever have been, because they extended the line from that border crossing to... Whatever the nearest city is. Starts with uh, an M. Probably, Unfortunately, they're all ran by Blackwater. <laughs> uh, if it's an M, it's be Mazar Sharif, right? Yes. Uh, okay. You now get a tra- cool. train from there to... I don't think they're passenger trains. I think they're all freight trains. You can be a hobo. You can be an Afghan hobo. You could be an Afghan hobo, yes. I mean, the, the Taliban then shoot you in the kneecaps because playing the harmonica is, is bidar. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the hobo bindle was actually uh, it was too it was longer than his beard, so he got his ears <laughs> chopped off. Once, once you cross the friendship bridge, everyone takes out their harmonicas and is like, finally, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kundas Phillips, hear the sound of freedom. <laughs> <laughs> it's like hobo markings on all the all the houses next to the um. <laughs> Wherever the rail terminates, yeah. <laughs> so, do not try to invade Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah do not do, do, not, do not try to build a railroad during a war. Yes. Uh, apart from those cool World War One trench railroads, those are cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, they worked pretty good in the Civil War, the American Civil yeah. War. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, I guess, I guess, build a railroad in your rear area, but not in the area where you're like getting shot at. Mm-hmm. I feel really uncomfortable saying anything about railroads in the South as a white man. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? Oh uh, man, uh, Sherman's neckties. You know they work real good. Um, yeah. <laughs> you like that cool Civil War mortar? You know the one that like the first rail gun, railroad gun. Excuse me, rail gun is different. Um, yeah, you know, it's like that. Just yeah, a- they just put a train on like a destroyer now. <laughs> Steampunk future comes back and gives all the Union soldiers rail guns. <laughs> to be to be fair, to be fair, I think I've solved the U.S. Navy's problem here, right? Oh, like, because you can absolutely destroy the engine of a fast boat by firing a train at it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna lack Mac and Teak their asses, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right. But if the US made it, somehow the train would be, like, rocket-powered by Agent Orange or something. <laughs> Look, I mean, that, that did happen. Um, the New York Central Railroad's M497, that was, um, well, that was two engines from a B thirty six. They stuck on the top of the train. You got to stop but, naming like ridiculous stuff about railroads because Justin will be able to say that happened. Oh yeah, that did, that did, that did, that did happen. Yeah, this is like all these things happened. They're very dumb. <laughs> they shouldn't have happened, but they did. <laughs> did anybody ever attempt to build a nuclear ra- nuclear railroad? I feel like they probably did. Yeah, it depends on your definition, but yes, sort of, yeah, uh, because of course. actually putting a nuclear reactor. I mean, a TGV uh, is a nuclear powered railroad, right? Yes. Like it's, uh, yeah, because uh, the French high speed rail network is pretty much all nuclear powered. Putting a nuclear reactor on the train was inve- that's what I'm talking about there. That was that's the kind of madness I'm looking for. <laughs> strongly investigated, never actually implemented, and then those ranged from anything from building a new. Like highly sophisticated nuclear locomotive to just taking a steam locomotive and 
putting a nuclear reactor in the firebox instead of coal. <laughs> <laughs> Just shoveling in Chernobyl's one at a time. Do not open firebox. That was a serious pro- <laughs> uh, project by the AEC. Is I think that Denver and Rio Grande Western was the partner on that one. It's like also highly classified. It's like, what if we could take steam locomotives and put a, put a nuclear reactor in there? It's like, well... I do love uh, someone like the fucking Flintstone just shoveling in radioactive material. Like it's a it's a job as a skin melts up. It's a living. People do people do be trying to bring back steam trains. Like, have you seen some of the like advanced steam propulsion systems that people like keep trying to make happen? Where it's just like, no, we can make steam trains environmentally friendly. Let me have my steam trains. Let me have this. So that was. There's like the 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 one that's trying to make heritage uh, operations more environmentally friendly, where they're going to use like biomass to run the steam engines as opposed Rat to bastards. you know coal, right? And Just they a were tender like, full of, of of shit. Yeah, it'd be like like wood pellets, you know. Uh, mm. But then there's like no, there were the insane projects in the '80s from American Coal Enterprises where they're like, we're going to make a modern steam locomotive. It's yeah, like funded, that's what I'm thinking of. This is when the coal companies saw the writing was on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, none of this surprised me because, you know, the U.S. attempted to make like a drive, uh, it was a, like a ramjet, but it was originally powered by like nuclear power. So as it flew, it just rained fallout down and everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, perfect. Who, did, who created this? Give that man a medal. Mm. We may do an episode on that in the future. Who knows? Yes. We made a we made a uh, like a crop duster, but for cancer. Yes. <laughs> nah, shit, yeah, Same yeah. thing with nuclear rocket engines, which nobody tell Elon Musk about. They're fine That's... if you're in space. Just don't fire it up <laughs> while you're in the atmosphere. You're fine. <laughs> nuclear rocket engines are a good idea. Uh, I put my stamp of approval on it. As long as you don't use them in the atmosphere, because then it'll cause a lot of cancer. But you know what's in space generally? There's a lot of radiation, a lot of so yeah. it doesn't matter once you're in space. <laughs> Elon Musk is going to try to put one in the fucking cyber truck, though. <laughs> oh my god! All right, so um, now we've learned lessons. So let's conclude this before I have to split it in half. Um, yeah. I forgot to put this slide in. Fuck! All right, next episode <laughs> is on the Tacoma Narrows Bridge disaster. Um, which should be here, but is not. It's a blank slide. That's right. It's the, 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 the Tacoma Narrows void. Yes. Well, no. <laughs> the next episode is about the Tacoma Narrows bridge disaster seen here at night. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the, I think the void is just called the Tacoma Narrows. Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone have any commercials before we go? Uh, listen to Trash Future with me on it. It's very good. Listen to Lions Led by Donkeys with Joe on it. It's also very good. And buy his Thank book. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Please. Buy all of his books. Yeah. The book is uh, The Hooligans of Kandahar, right? Yeah, I have The Hooligans of Kandahar. That's uh, out. I also have a military sci fi book called Citizen of Earth uh, is out, and its sequel comes out in August and is available for pre order now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I will say, personally, Hooligans of Kandahar is one of the best books I've read in the last few years. You should absolutely you. go fucking buy it. Uh, yep. And then subscribe to the live Co-sign. show by Donkey's Patreon uh, for their bonus episodes, which are much better than ours. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, that is true. They don't last forever. <laughs> yeah. How, Dep- how, depending Joe, on how drunk us I how am. Edit? <laughs> what is editing? I do not yeah, understand. Is. Editing, is, editing is when you don't say the riff that you are going to say, and you let Justin move on to the next slide. Yeah. Editing uh, is why I make my producer Nate drink so much. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that's a libel. Oh, that's a slander. That's gone. <laughs> <Can't> say- <laughs> I mean, this is this is valid for us because we are the only podcast in the Nate Bethay extended universe that is not edited by him. So we don't have to like impose uh, our terrible jokes on him. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, we make up for that more than enough on our end, uh, because most of the time, whenever he's like, "Dude, why did you say this?" <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm like, I don't remember that happening. So you go ahead and cut it. 
<laughs> why, why did you say the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan was a legitimate people's war? <laughs> Look, I'm just saying that the PDPR are misunderstood and uh, <laughs> should really give them a second chance. That's right. I mean, at this point, like quite legitimately, what could they could what could they do worse? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, didn't know it was going to end up this episode being the Najee Bola stand in uh, two hours, but here we are. <laughs> well, do you want to end on the Soviet Union? That well, seems about right. I've now drawn the Tacoma Narrows Bridge here, so. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. Beautiful. <laughs> All right. All right. I think, Bye, I think that was Bye, the podcast. Everybody. Yeah. All right. Good night, everyone. Okay, I'm going to stop recording. All right.